Hi all, welcome to Simple Engineering, Engineering Simplified. I am Neetu Rahul. Today we are going to discuss about Intrinsic and Extrinsic Semiconductors. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Let's move to the video. Intrinsic and Extrinsic Materials Intrinsic Semiconductor A perfect semiconductor without any lattice defect is called an intrinsic semiconductor. So at 0 Kelvin that is low temperature there are no charge carriers and when the temperature starts increasing or when the temperature is increased the electron hall pairs are created or it is generated and which are the only charge carriers and it is likely uh, to break the covalent bond in the crystal lattice. So the energy required to break that bond is called the band gap energy. And uh, here in this picture you can see that the silicon atom where it is in covalent bond with the other atoms. So E is the electrons and H plus is the holes. Uh, it is shown in the figure. So N is equal to P is equal to Ni which is your intrinsic carrier concentration. N is the uh, electrons and P is the holes. So the number of electrons N in the conduction band is equal to the number of holes in the valence band. So uh, at a particular temperature the carrier concentration is Ni which is the intrinsic carrier concentration and it depends on the band gap and temperature. And the recombination that takes place when an electron from the conduction band makes a transition to the valence band. It can be either a direct transition or an indirect transition. And for a steady carrier concentration, the rate of recombination of the electron hall pairs created must be the same as their generation. So if the temperature is changed, a new equilibrium is set and at any temperature, Ri is the recombination rate. It is equal to GI, generation rate. So Ri is equal to alpha R N naught P naught which is equal to alpha R N I square. That is N, uh, N naught and P naught which is your holes, uh, electrons and holes. It will be equal to the uh, intrinsic carrier concentration. So N I square which is equal to GI which means your recombination rate is equal to generation rate. The factor alpha R is a constant of proportionality which depends on the particular mechanism by which this recombination takes place. Next is extrinsic semiconductor. Here we are mixing an impurity with that semiconductor. That mixing of impurity is called doping. So an impurity is doped into the semiconductor. So by doping a special impurity, it will modify its electrical properties and it will make that a material or it is uh, making it suitable for the electronic application or some elect opto electronic applications and we are adding the impurity uh, to that semiconductor that is called a dopant. So when a crystal is doped such that its e equilibrium carrier concentration N0 and P0 are different from the intrinsic carrier concentration Ni. And that material is said to be an extrinsic semiconductor. And additional levels are created in the energy band structure usually within that band gap. And based on the impurity that we are adding to the semiconductor, this extrinsic semiconductor is classified into two types. P-type semiconductor and N-type semiconductor. So first we will see about N-type semiconductor. So uh, in this extrinsic semiconductor we are adding an impurity. So that impurity can be or it is the dopant. It is of if we are taking group 5 elements such as phosphorus and arsenic means it is called N-type semiconductor because it is a pentavalent dopant. So pentavalent means in that uh, dopant which we are adding or that element phosphorus or arsenic, it will be having 5 electrons in the outermost orbit. So 4 of these will be in a bond with the silicon atoms and the fifth one will be loosely bound. So that extra unbounded electron that is free to move within that energy level near the conduction band. 
and the impurity atoms are called donor atoms. So in this figure you can see that arsenic, the blue color one which is a pentavalent dopant which we are adding into that semiconductor. So silicon uh, atoms are surrounded by them. Silicon is, uh, this will be in a bond uh, with the uh, arsenic where arsenic is having 5 electrons in the balance band and silicon is having 4. So it will be in a bond with the four uh, atoms and the fifth one will be free. So when the temperature is at zero Kelvin you can see that this is the valence band and this is the conduction band and here this is your donor atoms. So these atoms will excite to the conduction band when your temperature starts increasing. That temperature is equal to zero you can see that the donor atoms is in this energy level. When your temperature is at 50 Kelvin it will excite to the conduction band. So the electrons are the majority carriers and the holes are the minority carriers here. Next is P type semiconductor. So in N type semiconductor we are adding the pentavalent impurity. So in P type semiconductor we are adding a trivalent element such as boron, uh, uh, indium and all uh, aluminium and all. So all these uh, elements uh, will be in a bond with the silicon atom. So in this figure you can see that boron which is having only three electrons in the outer motion. So it will be in a bond uh, with the uh, silicon atoms but silicon is having four electrons. So there will be uh, one fourth uh, silicon atom. It is there is no electron to bond with that. So this leads to a hole or a vacant vacant portion in the between that trivalent and the fourth silicon atom. So this hole it initiate a jump of an electron from the outer orbit of the atom and the hole is now available for conduction and the impurity which we are adding here in the P type semiconductor is called acceptor. So in the figure you can see that uh, when the temperature is 0 Kelvin you have uh, electrons in the valence pan and this is your acceptor level and this is your conduction band. When the temperature starts increasing, the electrons in the uh, in your valence band, it will be in the, that is the impurity acceptor atoms. So here vacant space will be created. That is the holes. Then next is the drift of carriers in the electric and magnetic field. So how that carrier drift is happening. So carrier concentration in a solid that determines the current flow in the presence of an electric and magnetic field. So in addition to the charge concentrations that is your electrons and holes N and P there will be the collision of that charge carriers with the lattice and the impurities uh, should be considered. So these collisions and scattering process it depends on the temperature which affect the thermal motion of that lattice atoms and the velocity of the carriers. And these factors affect the flow of electrons and holes through the crystal and their mobility within that solid. Next is the terms which we have to consider that is mobility which means it is it is denoted as mu it is equal to Vd by E where Vd is the drift velocity and E is the electric field. So mobility of the charge carrier means it is defined as the drift velocity of that charge carrier per unit electric field. Next is conductivity which is denoted as sigma that is equal to Q n mu n which where we are considering the charge of that uh, carrier which we are taking. Next is current density that is denoted as Jx which is equal to sigma epsilon x that is uh, we are con considering the conductivity or you can write in terms of Jx equal to minus Qn into Vx in terms of the considering the charge. Next is momentum it is denoted as rho which is equal to m into V which is mass and the velocity. So uh, here we have we have already discussed about the intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors and the drift of carriers in an electric and magnetic field and has also seen the uh, terms which we are using in this uh, semi related to the semiconductors and the charge carriers mobility conductivity current density and momentum hope this is clear for everyone if you find this useful please cons consider subscribing and share it with others thank you